If you're one of those that have been following along, you'll remember that as we worked our way up the coast, last week's video we came from Sandwich Marina and the Cape Cod Canal and went over to P-Town or Provincetown. And from there we went across Delwagon Bank over to Gloucester. And from Gloucester we came around Cape Ann and headed for Falmouth, Maine. Now Falmouth is a... I don't think I should really say a congested port. It's a very well used, utilized, natural, I guess you could say a natural harbor because it's got like islands on all the way around it and offers very good protection. And because of that, you can see a plethora of boats in here, all kinds of them. Amazing. Very fortunate. It's a beautiful town, great place to be. And uh, it's also where my dad lives. My dad's part of an association that has a deep water dock, so I can run the dinghy over there and walk up the hill and hang out with dad. I consider myself extremely blessed to be at this age and still have a parent that's still alive. My dad's awesome. He lives by himself, and uh, he's doing great. And times like this that I'm so happy that I'm able to pick up, move over, and spend uh, the rest of the season with him. So Crystalina and I came up here and we took Dad to his different appointments and we went shopping and hung out with him and did this and did that. And then we decided to uh, go out to Monhegan Island, the island that I grew up on. Crystalina had never seen that and it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's kind of got a reputation for being, or it has in the past for being unfriendly to cruisers i read that in a lot of guys guides i don't think that's they're, they're not talking about the people that are unfriendly they're saying that it's a place that has 12 foot tides and there really isn't any dinghy docks and the, the it's hard to anchor and there aren't a ton of moorings it's really not it, i really recommend that you guys go and so stick around and i'll show you what happened why you should go Hello and welcome, I'm Tim and this is SV Paquita. Come along almost every week, whenever I get a chance to post a video, and follow along as I try to make the transition from being a professional lifelong mariner to cruising a sailboat, mostly offshore, but sometimes in the coastal waters. Right now we're in New England and we're getting ready to go through the Cape Cod Canal and uh, head up towards Maine. Spend the rest of the season in the Gulf of Maine. Just come along, strap in, and hope you like it. So the day started out wet and gloomy and no wind to speak of until we got out of the islands anyway. And so I kind of went on a different route. I usually come in from the south into uh, around Portland and come into Falmouth. But uh, this time we're kind of going out to the northeast here and uh, weaving my way through all these islands. And uh, it's beautiful. I mean, it was a... Uh, overcast morning but the wind wasn't blowing so we we're running the engine and it was oh, a lot of fun Peter. Get out. Oh. <laughs> as always we saw a whole bunch of uh i think in this case we we're seeing porpoises but uh places loaded right up with all kinds of things whether it be seals everywhere or porpoises whales all kinds of stuff and so it was a lot of fun for chrysalita and a lot of fun for me you know, sometimes, I don't want to sound like I'm jaded, but sometimes you grow up watching different things and you forget how awesome nature is and how amazing the world is. And, you know, Chris Alita not growing up on the water has really opened my eyes to how wonderful things are. And uh, it's been kind of, it's, it's been fun experiencing new things through her eyes. <laughs> I, I hope that makes sense. But anyway, I'm just panning around here so you can see the rugged coast of Maine. I uh, usually drowned out the music, uh, the music of the engine <laughs> with, with a, some, a whole bunch of classic salsa, but uh, every time I play any, I seem to get in trouble with the copyright people, so I have to keep drowning that stuff out. 
Hey, and uh, I always get comments. Everybody looks at my uh, Iridium Go antenna right up here, right up the top there, and they see those four U-bolts that are sticking out, and everybody always makes a comment. And yes, I agree, they're terrible. They're way up out of the way. Nobody can ever poke their eye out like people are afraid of. But one day I'll get around to grinding them off. But it was right about here that we had an amazing, uh, I guess you could call it, say it an encounter. I saw there's a whole bunch of fishermen that were dodging, lobstermen, and uh, I used to lobster back in the day. I mean, I, was, I didn't have my own boat, but I was a stern man. And I uh, used to fish out at Cash's Ledge off of Monhegan. Anyway, I see this guy up here, and I kind of wait for him. I know that he's fishing strings, and so he's listening on me, yelling over to him. And it was literally that easy. The guy was awesome. I think he'd uh, <laughs> be all upset with us. But no, we just uh, yeah, uh, did. When I'm saying in the middle of his string, he's he's probably fishing eight or ten trap trawls, maybe six trap trawls. And what that means is it's 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 a string with lobster traps tied onto him. You know, it's a, a string of them. And uh, so if he's in the middle of that, he can't come to break away from that to see me and I can't get over to him so I'm just hanging out here waiting for the opportunity when he gets done with everything that he'll come around so now now I've got it, things changed and uh, I'm just in the water here I thought that I'd slowed down enough but uh, you'll see that I go flying by him but uh, he comes up and he was great I throw a bucket over to him now listen to l listen to what we say here this is uh you won't you won't believe what I get for the money here. Oh, I got twenty six bucks in cash. So let's go with the bucket. Okay, so what happened? He goes. He asked me. He goes. He asked me how many lobsters I want, and I said I've got twenty six dollars in cash because that's all the cash I had with me. So I said, give me whatever you can give me for twenty six dollars. So. So we wait for him, and he goes around, and uh, you'll see I'm going to move the camera around here. Chris Alita's trying to figure out what's what, what, what's going on. <laughs> wow. Grabalo, <laughs> grabalo. So right now he's counting out stuff, sorting them out, putting them in the bucket for me. <laughs> the people up in Maine are so cool. You would think that... This, this guy is working hard, making a living, and to take time out of his busy day <laughs> to deal with people from far away, tourists. Uh, you know, you normally think of the rough New Englander not wanting anything to do. But no, this guy was awesome. He came over and talked to us, and he, he was just really, really cool. So big shout-out to you out there if uh, you ever see this video. <laughs> So he just said that he gave us six lobsters. I think they're all pound and a half to two pound lobsters. Six lobsters for twenty-six dollars. It was kind of funny. I think the the day before we had had lobster rolls, and each roll was like thirty-two dollars a piece. <laughs> it was a great deal. One, and I, I say a great deal. It, it's a wonderful experience coming up and uh, talking with the uh, local guys and. Uh, Getting the getting what you're gonna eat for dinner right off the boat on the way to your destination. It's kind of cool. He was uh, liking the boat. So right here we're trying to hand over everything, but we're we're drifting apart a little bit, and uh, so he's going to get us a little bit closer. So he passes his gaff over, and we pull our, each other just a little bit closer. Yeah, that's all right. I'm alone. There's not too much going on. You're a good man. 
it, it uh, warms my heart. Love it when people are so cool like this. Like I say, uh, you know, I, and and you know, I'm getting kind of uh, sappy here, but I think of Chris Alita going back to New York City, and talking to her family from the Dominican Republic, and 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 she, her family, they're not even from the coast of it. They're from the middle. They're from a, a place called Mocha, which is right in the middle of the island, and, and uh, so they they didn't grow up around the water or anything like that. And uh, of course, she's taking pictures and video, and she'll be telling all of her clients and everything about us going out to the island and uh, meeting a lobsterman along the way and having him pass us over a bucket of lobsters. So it's those things that make memories so cool. Glad I was able to share it with you guys. But shortly after that, the sun came out and the sails came out and we sailed to Monhegan and saw an old captain of mine when I was... Uh, in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade on the weekends, I'd go fishing because there wasn't a whole lot to do. I'd go fishing with uh, Shermie Stanley, and he's the harbor master now, and he'd gotten us a mooring, and that was really cool and really fun running into him again, and uh, all that all excitement, I never broke out the camera, and then we said, you know what? The tide's down. Let's go over and to the seal ledges and see the seals. So we went flying over here, and I took some really awesome video while I was running the boat. At least I thought that I did. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't, I'd like to blame it like on a corrupt card or something like that. I don't think that was the case. I think I just thought that I hit the button and I, it, I, I, and I didn't. It just didn't work. But anyway, we, we also had another problem. There are seals in this. Um, I can let, you, okay, there's one right there. You, you'll see them around here. But what had happened is that there's three ferries that come out to the island in the summer. Uh, one comes from Port Clyde, one comes from New Harbor, and one comes from Booth Bay. The balmy days that comes from Booth Bay, before they return, they do a lap around the island and give everyone a tour. Because the tide was low, the seals usually go out to the seal ledges and they go and they sun and they warm up on there and you'll see hundreds of them up there. Well, unfortunately, we got there just after they had left and I think the seals got scared off by the big ferry that went by with everybody screaming and hollering taking pictures so we didn't see we didn't see one seal up on the up on the ledges so you and crystalita will have to take my word for it that they're usually up there either that or uh, something horrible has happened but there's been plenty of them in the water for us so that was always fun for those that don't speak Spanish, I'm telling her that uh, it smells really bad. The wind is coming. There's a slight breeze coming off the rocks here and the comorants. Uh, fun little fact. Growing up, I never knew that they were called comorants. We always called them shags. In fact, a lot of these ledges, they call them the shag ledges. The comorants go up on these rocks, and when they poop over the years, you can see the rocks are turning white. And uh, it smells pretty bad, so when you hear me saying, duele mal, <laughs> it smells bad, I'm saying to her. But before long, it was time to get back, try to get up the island before we ran out of sunlight. Dingy moves right along. I figured it's a good place for you guys to kind of see some of the shoreline. Monhegan's about 16 miles away from Booth Bay, about 12 miles away from uh, Port Clyde. There are, like I say, in the summer, there are three ferries that do day trips out there, so it's possible to go out in the morning and come back in the afternoon. Or you can go out and stay at some of the hotels or Airbnbs or cottages. Here's the balmy days. This is the one that goes to Booth Bay, and it just concluded its trip around the uh, around the island, and I assume was scaring all the seals away. And I don't know. Maybe the seals took off because of uh, you know there's been so many seals that the uh, white sharks, the great whites, have been in the northeast quite a bit lately. So maybe the great whites have decimated the uh, seal populations. I don't know, but usually, like I say, I, I have memories of just hundreds of seals on the ledges. But as you can see, the, they got quite a bit of tide there, so we tied to the dock, and uh, when you tie to the dock, you have to figure when you're coming back and figure how high or how low that you tie up 
you know the painter on your dinghy but uh walking up we used to call this wharf hill because it goes from the wharf or the town dock up to the top and you can overlook the harbor that's manana and smutty nose make up the uh harbor then we to try to get a little exercise we walked all the way up to the lighthouse so here we are taking pictures doing the touristy thing i think in a couple videos ago Oh, you know what? I don't think a couple videos ago. I think it's in a future video. I think it's the next. No, no, it's, it's, it may be the next video that I, that um, comes out next week. No, uh, You're gonna hear me talk about Seguin, and uh, I, I and I talk about the lighthouse in Seguin versus the lighthouse in Monhegan. So maybe I'll just shut up. Wild. mira, este son Paquita. <laughs> say look that's where that's where Paquita is. So we walk all the way out to the other <laughs> end of the island to the where the cliffs are. <laughs> And as you can see, after walking all the way over there, Cristalita is very excited. It was quite a workout just to get out there. And then when you come over, it just looks amazing. It's breathtaking. And uh, I kept, and she, she's always one for a hike and a challenge. And obviously, she's in much better shape than I am. <laughs> At least I appreciate her shape more than I appreciate mine. <laughs> but uh, it was beautiful. She loved coming out here. And it looked great. And I said, you know what? This might be a really fun opportunity to try to fly the drone out here. Uh, these are like 180 feet up so it's uh now she's pointing right now she's looking down at seals that are playing in the surf and i try to find them with uh with the drone but unfortunately it was so bright i couldn't really see i gotta get those dro those vr goggles but anyway that's looking south with gull rock at the end over there burnt head is around the other side this is actually whitehead and that's blackhead up there looking north and so we broke out the drone, got it up in the air. As you can see, it was a really bright day, so it was uh, very difficult to try to look at everything. We're using the my cell phone as the monitor of what I'm seeing, so it it uh kind of it's kind of easier to do when you're in the shadows. But it was very difficult at this time. But as you can see, things looked amazing, and in fact, I was uh, showing this footage to my father and uh he said something that i had been thinking about earlier and that's that we are seeing views of the island that i grew up on that we've never seen it from these this pers perspective before you know uh, we've been on the cliffs or on the water looking up the cliffs but never been able to extend out over them with the drone so these drones are amazing I'm uh, constantly impressed with the qualities, the the you know how good a picture they take. But uh, once again, we're coming over. This is uh, Whitehead right here. Monhegan is owned. I I, I want to say I, I think it's about eighty percent. My numbers might be wrong, but I think it's about eighty percent owned by. Uh, people called the Monhegan Associates, which are a bunch of people that have formed, I, I think it's a nonprofit that uh, owns most of the land and keeps it wild so that you can't build, you can't do anything like that. So it really kind of keeps it so that people can walk through the, you know, different paths, see the different beauty of the island. The island's amazing because it's on the migratory route for most of, um, I shouldn't say most, many of the birds that fly over to Europe. Uh, they'll stop here on the way over to Europe, and uh, when they come back from Europe, they stop here as well. So for the birding community, there's people from all over that come out to the island to see birds. and uh, there's Usually this is, maybe it's because of the late in the season, but usually the headlands are filled with artists people uh trying to capture these magnificent headlands that go into the water you could easily spend a month or two out on monhegan but for us we only had about a 24 hour maybe 36 hours before we had to get back but it sure was fun after the hike getting out there and uh, seeing Cristalita light right up when she saw how beautiful it was. Then it was time to land the drone. 
and head back down the hill, get to the dinghy, and get back and uh, start working on dinner. What's going on? Oh. Can you guys see that? Looks pretty good. Oh, it works. Now, if you're wondering what I just did there, that's an old trick. Yes, it is. Uh, you saw it? Something that a lot of people do is they overcook lobster. Yeah. And in trying to make lobster more, more better, as my Puerto Ricans would say, uh, sometimes you can you run the risk of undercooking lobster, but if you pull, if you give a, their their antennas a quick snap, if the antenna breaks midway, it's not done. But if it pulls right out, right where uh, it connects to the head, then it's done and it's done perfectly. So, anyway, that's your tip on how to cook lobsters. And if you want a tip on how to eat lobsters, I don't know if this is really a tip or not. I'm wondering if any of you guys do this like I do. And there are some people that want to uh, break a claw and eat some of the meat and dunk it in the butter and all. That's fine. Uh, I usually break a lot of stuff up and put it all in the butter and get kind of cleaned up and then eat everything all at once. Let me know in the comments if you do that too. It was a great night, a wonderful meal, and... Uh, it's fun having you guys along with us. Be sure to c tune in next week. We take the drone up for a, one of my longest flights ever up around the lighthouse. And then we actually uh, head into Booth Bay Harbor. Have all kinds of fun there before heading back. You guys take care, be safe, and as always, I'll see you guys on the one.